story of 20,000 leagues under the sea begins in 1866. That year, ships all over the world reported seeing something strange swimming in the ocean. Something big. Something with an eerie green eye. And that something was... a monster. This monster was chasing ships all over the seven seas. That wasn't so bad except the monster had a long spear stuck right in its nose. And it didn't think twice about sticking that nose right through the hull of a ship. Something had to be done. And that's why Admiral Selling of the United States Navy was called in to help. Unfortunately, Admiral Selling didn't know the first thing about monsters. So she went to the Museum of Natural History in New York City to meet Pierre Aranax. Actually, he's Dr. Pierre Aranax, but everybody called him the Professor. That's because he had a PhD in zoology. And he was really smart. Admiral Selling had heard that the professor and his sister Beth were the only people in the whole wide world who might know how to find this monster. Frankly, Admiral, I've never found a monster. You haven't? No, because they simply don't exist. But what about your famous trip to the Loch Ness? Oh, there was no monster there. It turned out to be just a log. A really big and lumpy log. What about your search for Sasquatch? turned out to be a lumberjack with really big and lumpy feet. The point is, Admiral, monsters only live in legends. They're just myths people tell around campfires to scare each other. But people all over the world have seen this monster. Baloney. Nothing is more unreliable than the human eye. You see, my brother only believes in cold, hard facts. Right you are, Beth. And facts only become facts through proper scientific methods. My brother believes that science holds the answers to everything. Right again, Beth. Science is the key to all the secrets in the universe. And my brother also has a big, fat head. Right, oh, Beth. My head is unusually large, and the size of it is... Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> well, I won't comment about the size of your head, Professor, but I do know that something big is loose on the high seas. How big? Over 300 feet long. Impossible. There isn't a creature on Earth that's over 300 feet. Except, perhaps, a monster. No, a totally new species. You mean an animal that hasn't yet been discovered? Exactly. Professor, this could be the opportunity of a lifetime. You're right. If I could discover this unknown species, why, it could be the high point of my entire career. Not bad, since you're only 11 years old. So you'll join our expedition. What expedition? The USS Abraham Lincoln sails at sunset. Its captain has orders to search the seven seas and find this monster. Unknown species. Call it what you want, Professor. The US Navy needs your help. Count me in. Count us in. By sunset of that same day, the Professor and Beth were sailing the Atlantic Ocean aboard the USS Abraham Lincoln. This was the most modern ship in the US Navy, and it was commanded by Captain Farragut. Very impressive ship, Captain. Now, all we need to do is find the creature. I think we can help you with that. You can? We call this our double helix dual flex confibulator. What does it do? We believe the creature might be related to the whale family. If so, it'll make sounds that this machine can hear. Just follow the sounds and we'll find the creature. Splendid idea. It'll never work. What? I said it will never work. And I suppose you're some sort of expert? Well, I know the ocean. And I know you're not going to catch any monster with that contraption. Professor, Beth, I'd like you to meet Ned Land. He's the ship's harpoonist. Best harpoonist on the seven seas. You just get me closer to that foul critter? 
We'll be at Monster Shish Kebab in no time. And how do you propose we find this critter? By smell. Smell? Sure. All monsters stink to high heaven. Baloney. Nothing is more unreliable than the human nose. Besides, how do you know monsters stink? Have you ever seen a monster taking a bath? Why, no. I rest my case. Then you've observed monsters before. Well, let's just say I've heard things. Tales of creatures big enough to eat a whole ship in one bite. Stories of sea serpents with 50-foot fangs. Eyewitness accounts of giant flying octopuses. Gibberish. You don't believe in flying octopuses? Hardly. How about mermaids? You gotta believe in mermaids. Not a chance. Sea sprites? Foolishness. Ghost ships? Never. My brother doesn't believe in anything he can't quantify, qualify, or calibrate. That's right, Beth. I only believe in scientific investigation. Well, I only believe in playful imagination. There's enchanted lands I love to see Where dragons find a friend in me And tall great ships fly high above the ground Come and stare at the horizon See a true thing that surprises For it seems the world is flat and yet it's round Well, I think that's a miracle Gotta believe in the unbelievable. You gotta conceive of the inconceivable. Cause anything is possible between the earth and sky. When you can't explain away the thing you can't deny, you just gotta believe it. And you can't believe it if you try. A phenomenon called gravity. Nobody can touch or see Has kept us all from flying off in space For a miracle you must agree A dream, a wish, a fantasy Can happen any time in any place I'm in a world of imagination Mine is a world of investigation We are well the great unknown You just gotta believe In the unbelievable You gotta conceive of the inconceivable Cause anything is possible Between the earth and sky When you can't explain away A thing you can't deny you just gotta believe it And you can't believe it if you try you just gotta believe you gotta believe In the unbelievable, in the unbelievable. You gotta conceive yeah. Of the inconceivable Ooh. Cause anything is possible
guess you're all right. Thank goodness I learned how to swim. Now what do we do? Hold on tight. Someone's bound to find us sooner or later. is this professor I know this sounds impossible but I think it's a sub oceanic craft of some sort very good very good indeed who are you my name is Nemo I'm the captain of the Nautilus the world's first and only submarine a submarine? Wow. That's incredible. How deep can you go? How fast can you go? How do you breathe underwater? What type of engines do you have? Please, I'm not here to answer your questions. I'm only here to right a wrong. And what's that, flounder face? You've come back to kill us? I never intended to harm you or any of your friends. I just wanted to give Captain Farragut a warning. A warning? Yes, a warning to leave me alone. So... Are we your prisoners? No. I will give you a small lifeboat and some food and water. A passing ship will rescue you. That's very nice, Captain. But maybe we could ride along with you for a couple of days. Take a trip in this bucket of bolts? Underwater? What, are you crazy? I apologize for my friend's rudeness, sir. I'm Professor Pierre Aranax, and this is my sister and assistant, Beth. The impolite fellow is Ned Land. We'd all love the opportunity to accompany you on your magnificent craft. You are most welcome. And if you come with me, you will learn secrets beyond your wildest dreams. However, these secrets, like all secrets, come with a price. A price? <laughs> Captain Farragut has not understood my warning. So, what are you going to do? Nothing. I have more important things to do than play with the Navy. Well, the choice is yours. You can have my lifeboat and take a chance your friends won't blow you to kingdom come. Or, you can come with me. I think I'll stick with you.
We've leveled off at 300 feet. 300 feet? You mean 300 feet underwater? The Nautilus is built to go much deeper. This is plenty deep for me. My first mate will show you to your quarters. He will give you dry clothes. Thank you, Captain. Dinner will be served in my stateroom in two hours. Until then, you're free to explore. My home is your home. Just don't touch anything. What do you think it is? I think it's an oxygen recycling system. An oxo-cycle what? It? Oxygen recycling. It takes air out of water so we can breathe down here. You mean like the way a fish uses its gills? Exactly. That's amazing. Hey, guys, you think that's amazing? Wait till you see what I've found. inside of a treasure chest. Biggest treasure chest I've ever seen. Where do you think Nemo got all this stuff? I don't know. Maybe he got it from the bottom of the ocean. The bottom of the ocean can get pretty deep. Not too deep for the Nautilus. Hey, guys! So, what do you think? See any resemblance? Ned, remember what Nemo said. Don't touch anything. Ah, Nemo Schlemo, what's it gonna hurt? Oops. What is it, Professor? I'm not sure, but... Come on, let's take a closer look. Ned? I know, I know, don't touch it. sights few people have ever seen. Is that why you built the Nautilus? To see the sights? 
No. I built the Nautilus to be free. Free? Mobilis and mobile. Mobilis and mobile? What's that? It's Latin. I think it means free in a free world. Right you are. And free I am. Come. We can discuss this over dinner. Hope you're hungry. Boy, I thought you'd never ask. How is everything? Delectable. Delicious. I'll take that as a compliment. Captain, we noticed you have quite a stockpile of paintings and sculptures. Yeah, where'd you find all that cool stuff? By the way, this chicken is out of this world. Yes, it does taste like chicken, doesn't it? And to answer your question, I find all the artwork on sunken ships. So you sink ships and steal their treasures? I don't sink ships. I'm a collector, not a pirate. What about the Abraham Lincoln? Yeah, what about the Abraham Lincoln? You guys gotta try a burger. These are the best. I never tried to sink the Abraham Lincoln. I only wanted to scare it away. But why? I want to be left alone. And the other ships? Were you just scaring them away too? As a matter of fact, yes. Unfortunately, their captain zigged when they should have zagged. Mr. Nemo, sir, I've got a question for you. Oh, boy. Where did you get this great pepperoni pizza? Pepperoni? Oh, that's not pepperoni. It's not? No, it's actually sliced left eye of octopus. Left eye? So this isn't really spaghetti and meatballs? Oh my, no. That's fish liver lumps and sea snake mucus. Yummy, isn't it? Uh-huh. And I suppose that this isn't really a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Close. It's actually stingray lips and spicy jellyfish parfait. I must get the recipe. In fact, everything you see here has been carefully harvested from the sea. Everything? Everything. Oh. When you travel 20,000 leagues under the sea, all of your food is of the oceanic variety. When you travel As delicious as a feast can be. Now for your first course. Pate of seahorse. Belly button lint. Flambe of toe jam. From a Tokyo clam. Earwax a sea snake. Puff a burger milkshake. Fricassee of whale warts. And a stew of snail snorts. Who can resist grilled eyeballs of a star?
gonna walk on the bottom of the ocean? Precisely. How do we breathe? Each of these suits carries its own supply of oxygen. Ingenious design. Today, we're gonna be collecting sea urchins, bottom slugs, and coral algae. Take care. This is a fragile reef. We only take what we need. And remember... I know, I know. Don't touch anything. Oh, you can touch, Mr. Land. <laughs> but whatever you touch, you have to eat. In that case, I won't touch a thing. <laughs>
sharks almost had us for lunch. Creatures of the sea need to eat, too. Well, if the sharks are that hungry, they can have my snail snort leftovers. Come with me. I can show you something much more interesting than hungry sharks. The class is warm. The waters around here are over 210 degrees Fahrenheit. That's close to the boiling point. exactly are we, Captain? At a place that doesn't exist. At least that's what most people believe. I thought it was just a myth. But as you see, Professor, the myth is true. The lost city of Atlantis. I've heard stories about Atlantis. It disappeared thousands of years ago. 9,000 years ago to be exact. The whole city was thrown into the ocean when Mount Atlantis exploded. The volcano was still erupting, still ripping the earth apart, still guarding its secrets. Can we get any closer, Captain Nemo? No. The waters around here are too hot. Even the Nautilus can't stay here too long. Thanks for showing us your secret, Captain. We can't wait to tell the boys back on the docks. I'm afraid you won't be telling anyone. What? Before you got on the Nautilus, I told you that all secrets come with a price. And what is the price of your secrets? I can never allow any of you to leave this submarine. What? If I let you go, you may tell others about my discoveries and inventions. We won't talk. Honest. Besides, who would believe us? I can't take that chance. So we're your prisoners? I prefer to think of you as my guests. My permanent guests. You can't keep us here. I can, and I will. Why, I ought to then! Somebody forgot to tell this guy. I've seen enough. Ned! Come back! We're all in this together! Now what is it doing? The creature thinks we're food. It's it's trying to eat us. Then we'll have to give it a bad case of indigestion. Electricity and nothing. This creature's got a very primitive central nervous system. Electricity won't hurt it. Then we're gonna have to use something a bit more persuasive. What do you mean? Stun guns.
white. Oh? And what bright idea do you propose, Dr. Aronax? It's not an idea. Let's just call it a secret. A secret? That's right. And all secrets have a price. Right you are, Beth. And what price must I pay for your secret? Mobilis and mobile. Free in a free world. You promise not to tell anybody about the Nautilus or all your discoveries. But in return, we want our freedom. Bring me of this monster and I will free you both. But what about Ned? That's a goofball. I can't trust him to keep my secrets. I can't even trust him to tie his own shoes. He will stay on the Nautilus. No Ned, no deal. All right, all right, you can have Ned. Just tell me your secret. I'll be brief. Give me four sticks of dynamite and a very short fuse. What? It's simple. A small concentrated explosion will shake up the creature's nervous system. And that will cause its jaws to open. And the Nautilus can pull itself free. Let me get this straight. All we do is just toss some dynamite into the creature's mouth and it'll let us go? Not exactly. We have to get the dynamite near the core of the nervous system. And where might that be? Near the roof of the creature's mouth. Oh, and how do you propose we get the dynamite to stick to the roof of the creature's mouth? You called? Coward, Captain? He's brave, all right. Now let's hope he knows how to throw that harpoon. Here he is! I was the best harpoonist ever sailed the seven seas. That you are, Nen. Thank you for saving the Nautilus. Now, Captain, are you a man of your word? Mobilis in mobile? Yes. You shall be free in a free world. <laughs> Nemo was indeed a man of his word. He gave the professor, Beth and Ned, a special life raft, and they were soon picked up by a passing fishing boat. As they watched the Nautilus slip below the surface, the professor, Beth and Ned, knew they would never forget their incredible adventure, sailing 20,000 leagues under the sea. <laughs>